we have Hunter, and we have Dinah. They're good kitties. Some cats don't like when you touch them certain places. But then we have these guys. Not a care in the world. And then her, she's curled up in a ball, you can see. And dig my hand right in there and get at her belly. And these two are siblings. Presumably from the same litter. I found them both outside separately. But they were, see, look at her. She loves it. She loves her belly rubbed so much. I found them outside when they were kittens. They were the same age, but I found them separately in different locations at different times of the day. Because they were the same age, I assumed they were siblings. And they do have the same eye color. But nothing else is the same. Their body size, their fur color, their markings, their fur length. But they're, they were raised as siblings, so. Good kitty. Dinah also, unlike most cats, loves to be held like a baby. Tucked up on her back. Belly up. You could, you could hold her like that for hours. She loves being held. If you, you can actually spoil her, you can, uh, she likes being held so much that you can pick her up and you can carry her around while you do all your chores and everything, assuming you can do it one-handed. And she'll just peacefully lay there and watch and let you without wiggling or trying to escape nothing because she just loves being held. I've never had a cat like that. Tiger doesn't like to be held. Baby doesn't like to be held. Hunter has a love-hate relationship with being held. If you uh, flip him over on his back like a baby, he will stretch out his limbs until he's like three feet long. Back legs and front legs. And then he'll, uh, I can't record that mostly because I don't have enough hands, but I totally would. And then once he unstretches, he'll stay stretched out for several long moments. And then once he's good and he pulls his limbs back in, then he starts wiggling. Whisper, who's not in here because she's scared of the gate. That gate's there to keep the dogs out. Whisper doesn't come in here anymore because of that gate. I've manually brought her in a couple times and she would sit and cry for a while before figuring out she could go over the gate. Tiger, your eyes... 
Dinah has trouble getting over the gates too. She doesn't like to jump. She's a climber. So she stretches all the way up, grabs the top, hefts herself up, and that middle, the, the door's made of like a metal mesh. So she gets her claws in that and goes over it. And that's assuming her pitifully crying outside the uh, gate on either side for like 20 minutes doesn't get any sympathy because they have to go over because despite the fact the water, the litter box, me is in here, their food's out. Uh, I moved it out into the living room outside. Out to that door. So they, ha they have to leave in order to eat. Which forces them to go over the gate instead of lazily staying in here. Hey, please focus. Socks on the floor. That's a pair of socks balled up. They uh, like to bat that around. Cats are very simple to please. Yeah, my phone decided it was too dark. <gasps> and I exactly turned on the flash. And I decided not to care. You can see some glowing eyes in there, too. Wreckage. It's so big. They love it so much. Hey, baby. Baby doesn't like being held at all, but she's not aggressive. She just wiggles. You pick her up and hold her, and she's still for a moment, and then she starts wiggling until you put her down. She has, though, started laying on top of my body, which is new. Oh, cat. Oh, I'm sorry for the yawning. Phone call woke me up, and my cats were being cute, so instead of going back to sleep, I started recording them. Leggy. So, yeah, she's always asked for attention. she come up, she rub on you. She would, if you're, like, in a chair or something higher than you, she would, uh, find some place close to sit and reach up and paw at you so that you do pet her head. She loved that. She was real good at asking for attention, but she never cuddled, at least not me. She did used to lay on Grandpa sometimes, but she would never cuddle me. And then after I got sick, she started coming in the bed and started laying with me. Sleeps on my pillow up here. That's behind my back, so I don't know if I got him. Sleeps on my pillow. Sleeps on top of my body if I'm laying down. And she does this adorable thing. Where she'll tuck her face down. Against the uh, bed, against the pillow. Against my arm. She just likes to tuck her face in against things and then fall asleep that way. It's adorable. I got pictures of it, but I didn't get a video of it. Sure I will. Dinah is back. <sighs> One thing I never told you guys. Um, Dinah and Tiger. Hi, Tiger. Dinah and Tiger are both dominant cats. They are both alpha. Because they both want the dominant position over all the other cats, they uh, don't get along themselves. Like, there's no serious fights or anything, but every time they're within the vicinity of each other, they slap each other in the face. And considering they're both super attached to me and close to me all of the time, they bump into each other a lot. <laughs> So, 
I find that funny. Tiger's always the winner, mostly because he's been the alpha cat for 15 years. You know how the... Oh, sorry. The hierarchy of cats goes. One's the alpha, and everybody else is submissive in a cat colony. And even though I'm the owner, I am not the alpha. Tiger is. And Dinah is extremely dominant and wants that place. So. They just smack each other in the face. And she's usually the instigator. He's content to, like, keep an eye on her or sniff her if she gets close. But then she smacks him in the face and... He's always been kind of an aggressive cat. Like, he's super duper loving, but he was always super duper loving to me and then aggressive towards everybody else. And he's actually really mellowed out with age. Like, still, he'll hiss at people. Um, in the spring, he bit my caseworker. For no reason, by the way. She was sitting on the bed talking to me, and he went up to her... Um, stretched up her back to sniff her hair so he was stand his front paws were on her shoulder so she reached back to uh, give him a pet and he numbed her she was completely fine it was like a warning numb but it was like so random because like he's the one who invaded her space nerd <sighs> Diana getting all alert because Tiger's getting close Tiger doesn't care like he doesn't really care what her problem is he doesn't instigate but he always wins She's always fussy about it. When he's gone, which I don't want to think about, she's definitely going to be the top cat. And the top cat always ha eats first, drinks first. Like if they've emptied their food bowl so they're hungry and they're all yelling at me. We, just, we have a food bowl similar to that water dish down there where it's got a little tank and filters it down as they eat so there's food down all of the time. When that gets empty, they all start crying at me, which, you know, as one does. And um, when I fill a bowl, it's always the alpha cat who eats first and then goes down the pecking order. So it's usually Tiger and then Dinah and then Hunter. Baby comes in next. And then it's Whisper at the end. And sometimes it's whoever gets there first. But once the uh, top cat comes in, they get booted out so the top cat can eat. Thankfully, we've got we've got three water dishes. We've got these two ones down here, the fountain that the cats love. All the animals prefer the fountain, so it empties real quickly. I don't know if you can see the water level. The line at the bottom is where the water is, so it's starting to get a little noisy. It used to turn red when it was low. It stops doing that, and now it just makes noises at me and growls because the water isn't uh, filtering through the system because it's too low. So that's where the noises come from. That's just a regular sit-out water water thingy. It's just a small one. And then there's a like a 10-gallon one out in the living room. So that's a water source for everybody. 
We had two waters in here initially because when that gate wasn't open, the dogs also drank from the water dish. And also we had that sitting water before the fountain and we just kept both of them. And the cats drink from both, but they prefer the fountain. It just helps to make sure that there's water available all the time because they slurp that fountain down. <laughs> Normally, Tiger would be up here cuddling with me, but because I'm sitting up and shining a bright light everywhere because the flash on the phone is on while I record, he is active, I guess, is the best way to say it. Because normally he's asleep most of the time laying with me, and now he's just active and moving around and doing stuff. I, however, am tired. I will definitely give you guys a health update in a soon. I'll, I'll do it soon. I definitely have some information to share with you guys that the doctors found, but not enough. I've got a ton of tests to do, so I want to get through all of those tests to see if there's anything else in addition to that information we did find. So I'm not uh, giving bits and pieces. So I'm not better yet, but I do have uh, some medicine. I'm tired. I'm going back to sleep. So, oh, look at the cute. Look at the cute. But yeah, she genuinely loves to have her belly rubbed. Hunter likes it. Baby actually likes it too. Whisper is neutral. Tiger tolerates belly rubs for... You can get a few scratches in and then he gets annoyed. Like he'll start stretching out. And seemingly enjoying the rubs. And then he'll start lashing his tail. And if you don't stop, he grabs you and nips you. He, the closest thing he does, he likes under his armpit scratched. He does like that, but not his belly. But you know what? That's fine for him. Oh, I mentioned how um, he doesn't like to be picked up and carried or cuddled. That, uh, he likes to ride on shoulders is the exception. Like, he doesn't like being enclosed in arms, but he'll, uh, ride on your shoulder. Like, hanging over with his back claws on your back. Like, in your shirt, not in your skin. But he holds on real good. I have no idea what that was about. It's probably a bug. Dinah is also enjoys riding on shoulders. She's not as good at it. She uh, doesn't hold on with her back feet like Tiger does. She lets them dangle uselessly. She does hold on with the front ones, but the back back legs just dangle uselessly. So she slips off every now and then. <laughs> Tiger will get up and try to walk around your shoulders and then sit on the other side or turn around. He's very good at that. Ever since a kid, he was a kitten, I would put him on my shoulders, so he's very good at that balance. Dinah less so. But Dinah also likes to be carried uh, anyway except like upside down.
and Hunter's just too heavy to carry around. We're uh, getting everybody some new collars. Since Dinah was the last one to eject hers, this is a flea collar. Not the uh, somewhere in this mess uh, here. I found this on the floor. It's Dinah's collar. So she's got her information on the other side because I like to take her outside. So we wanted to get her an engraved tag. I'm not flipping that over because it's got our phone numbers on it. Well, hello. But me and Grandpa picked out some new collars. The girls get uh, flowers on their collars, and the boys get bow ties. They haven't been ordered yet. They're sitting in the Amazon cart, but they're there. They probably need new flea collars, too. These collars were expensive. They're like 40 bucks per collar or something like that. I don't remember the brand, but they're uh, extremely good. Like, normally, we always had bad luck with flea collars. Like, they never actually did anything. But these collars um, actually killed fleas. And rather quickly. Because... We don't really get flea problems because all of our cats are... I don't want to say exclusively indoor because I too take, do take Dinah and Tiger outside sometimes. But, you know, fleas uh, will cling to your clothes and come inside. So it's not really necessarily an animal going out. Also, the dogs go out. So fleas come from there, too. Hey. So... Hunter is the most susceptible to fleas because his fur is long and it's harder to get to them. Clean the fur out. So he's always the problem child when we get fleas. We don't have any fleas. These collars have been on them over a year. We still haven't had fleas. I'm sure they need new ones. Hunter's came off because it was... I don't know, he had somehow gotten it to be too tight at some point and it was rubbing his fur off. So we took that off of him. Baby got hers off because she's a mastermind and hates collars. Everybody else still has their... I think Whisper might still have her nylon collar on too, but she's going to get a swap anyway. So... Fresh flea collars are definitely on the back burner because they're so expensive. Like, they really work. I don't remember what brand, Sargento or something like that. Each collar comes in an individual tin can. It's pretty nice. The dogs use the same collars, obviously, the dog version of them. And it really helps. This is not a product placement. I said I was going to go sleep instead of talking about flea killers. But yeah, hopefully next time I make a pet video, we will have the new collars. And you can see how beautiful my cats are. All of them, the girls and the boys. Flowers and bow ties. I also found Pikachu rat costumes on, uh, on Amazon. Obviously, since I don't have an income, that's uh, on the back burner. But it sure is on my wish list. I don't know what those two are doing. The water's up there, and then the food is up there. So I don't know what they're doing. They're probably just cuddling. Looks like somebody is sleeping in that litter box. And I don't know... I can't tell where Willie's at. Anyway, that will be all. 
you got some cute pets. I caught some cute moments of Tiger being dorky and Zaina being cuddly. She even likes that part of her tail scratched a lot. She just loves being touched. So, uh, that'll be all, guys. Remember to like and subscribe if you want to see more uh, random videos of my pets. And all the other random crap that I post. Ciao!